Today we're going to paint a collie and we're going to use a triad of colors in order to do it and look at value shapes. So let's get started. All right, the triad of colors that I use traditionally uh, to paint pets, this is not true if I was painting a white dog and this is not true if I was painting a black lab, but in general, many pets uh, are sort of um, mostly mid-toned and tend to be sort of brown or have brown fur. And I know this because I painted pets for a very, very long period of time. I made a nice living painting a pet friend of the day. Yeah, I used to paint a pet friend every single day. Um, I, haven't, I don't paint that many pets anymore. Um, and I forgot how much I enjoy doing it. But I'm a value shape painter. And so what I do is I'm looking at value and shape. So the first thing I do is I put in my darkest values. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm doing using a triad of cerulean blue, alizarin crimson, and um, quinacrinone sienna. That makes a really nice base for darks. I think a lot of people use black to do this, but um, I like to maintain a certain amount of brightness in my paintings if I can. And I think that the brown, making a triad using a brown, you can see it almost reads a little bit purple, but it's definitely a brown, um, creates a um, higher uh, brightness and a nicer chroma for me to my eye than say a black would do. I don't have black on my palette at all, but I do use a lot of neutrals. I'm a great fan of neutrals. So I've got my darks in and I'm looking at the photograph. I'm squinting my eyes and looking for any darks that I see. I'm going to put those, get those established. So now once all the darks are in, my next task is to find my lightest lights. So I got my darkest darks in, using a triad, now I'm gonna put in my lightest lights. Now, a lot of people would use masking fluid in order to do this, but I don't because I'm very clumsy with masking fluid and when I pull it off, it always looks like um, like like I ripped a Band-Aid off a scab. I, I just don't, it just always looks um, wrong to me. I can't even explain it. So strangely enough, this is a very pale Naples yellow going in. Uh, that's gonna be my lightest lights. All right. so. This is kind of where, for me, a painting begins. I have my darkest darks in. By darkest darks, I mean my dark shapes. I have my lightest lights in, which I'm going to preserve, which are where the Naples yellow is. Okay, I tell myself, what's left? And I say, what's left is all mid-tones. And this often happens with a portrait as well. So mid-tones tend to be, oftentimes, you know, reds and, and um, lighter greens. So I got the collar in because I thought, get the collar in, which is pretty much a cadmium red, probably has a little bit of alizarin in it as well. But I need that because now I'm gonna to try to match that value to almost everything else that goes into the collie's face, because then I know it'll be in the mid-tones. So this is um, burnt sienna with quite a bit of cerulean blue in it too. It makes a nice brown, and surprisingly in a collie, I see that there's a lot of blue. I don't know what that is. Um, but it must have something to do with the breed, that there's a lot of blue in, I don't know, maybe in their skin down there, there's, there's some blue underneath, I don't know. But anyway, it's what I see. It may not be what everybody sees. So I'm checking and seeing. If I squint really hard, or if you squint right now, look at the collar and then look at the color I'm putting in. It's almost, it's almost exactly the same value. I would say there's probably a value of maybe four. Mm, three or four. So, like I said, since everything is mid-value, I have to now find another color that is going to be mid-value to put in and, and establish my shapes. This is a little bit lighter than the color I just put in. Probably pretty similar to that, the same mixture, but it's definitely just a tad lighter. If you squint and looked really, really closely, you'll see that it's lighter. So again, I'm not looking at the eyes, I'm not looking at the nose, I'm not looking at anything other than value shapes. Just if I can get the value shapes correct, then you know the painting will sort of turn will, will turn into a form and that form should resemble a dog. It's sort of similar to doing pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and then at the very end, you know, stepping back and seeing what your picture is. So so far so good. You know, oh, I also should say I'm using an 8x8 sheet of Arsh uh, cold pressed paper, and this is a number 20 brush. And that is because I don't, I, I like to use as few strokes as possible and keep things broad. I like, you know, everybody has their individual style, but I'm just really interested in big value shapes. 
So this is probably a burnt sienna going in. Mm, I would have put something else in with it, but I'm not sure what. Maybe, maybe a little bit of Naples yellow. I'm not sure. But if you squint, you'll see that now this is lighter. This is lighter than anything that I've put in so far, other than the places that I reserved as being white. But it's still a mid-tone, probably now a mid-tone of uh, value of two. So I've gone from threes, and now I'm going into my twos. Because I established my darks as being my darkest darks and my lights as being my lightest lights, now, you know, my darkest darks being maybe a six, maybe a five or a six, and my lightest lights hopefully being a one, what's left is um, any numbers in between. So it's more about value than it is about color. So I've added quite a bit of yellow to um, my mix, and that's warming things up. It's warming things up and also making things lighter. So I'm creating the form by changing the value and the temperature. The value meaning how light or dark something is, the temperature being how warm or cool it is. I needed a neutral background, which I mixed from um, the colors that I've already used, which would have been, again, that cerulean blue, alizarin crimson, and uh, a burnt sienna. The reason for the uh, neutral background, because I could have put anything back there, is um, the Kali is kind of a neutral color overall. And if I put a really colorful background, it's going to compete with any of the colors that I have in the Kali. So I thought, keep the background neutral. That'll make the colors look like they're brighter than they really are. All right, that was my hand checking to see if things were dry. Because I'm ready to put in probably uh, the next coat. I probably walked away from the painting, looked back at it, and tried to establish, okay, what do I need? All right, everything's dry. I need to come back in and make these dark shapes just a little bit darker. Not changing my plan at all. I'm just adding another layer. Now let me, I'm squinting right now. Uh, did that change the value? A tiny bit. I think that might have changed it just a tiny bit. Not a whole step, but maybe a half a step. But I must have felt that I needed that. So, But I'm just reinforcing a decision I already made about putting in a mid-tone. And of course, once you do one thing in a painting, it's going to affect another part of the painting. So I didn't feel like um, I had enough... Um, what do you call it, uh, brightness of color, or um, what is that called, chroma, I think it's called chroma, anyway, um, and so I mixed up some Hansa yellow along with that burnt sienna, probably tipped in a tiny bit of cerulean as well, because now I need to get something, or I want to get something that looks a little bit lighter in terms of some yellows here, so that things don't look quite as monochromatic in terms of browns, so those are going in. But they're all, again, you know, this is a value shape painting, so it's getting those darks established at first in this case. And, and sometimes, like I said, I paint from my lightest lights to my darkest darks. But in this case, I painted from my darkest darks to my, I left my lightest lights um, alone. Although I took care of them at first with Naples yellow. But you can see where I put Naples yellow is now starting to appear to be white. There's only one piece of white that's left in the painting, which I can see on the cheek of the dog at the very bottom. And I think I leave that. I hope I do. I always try to leave just at least one spot of white on, on in, in every painting that I do. So what I forgot to say is that this is our new um, Collie rescue dog named Henry. And um, he does not like the studio, unfortunately. We're going to have to uh, do a lot of training to get him to be a studio dog. He, he not only doesn't like the studio, but I think he doesn't like the studio because of that hair dryer. He really hates the hairdryer, and I called his former foster uh, parent to find out about that, and she said, uh, yeah, indeed, she'd had him for eight months, and his hatred of a hairdryer uh, could not be resolved. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that, because I, I use the hairdryer to dry between layers. And she said even if she was on the second floor of the house and Henry was on the bottom floor of the house, if he heard that hairdryer, he, he just uh, got very, very agitated. So... Um, <laughs> that is the that is the problem we're get, we're going to have to solve fairly soon if we're going to be if I'm going to be able to paint and and uh, and uh, you know Henry and I will coexist. I know it's going to take a lot of time for him to get used to other sounds, and I I completely you know of course I accept that. 
the hair dryer is going to be the what would appear to be what's going to be the biggest challenge. So I've researched uh, quieter hair dryers, and uh, there's not really such a thing. Um, so if you know this something that would solve this problem, I, I would love to know what it is. I may just have to wear earplugs. And, and the other thing I've tried to do is use the hair dryer as little as possible. Uh, putting in some spots of cerulean blue, almost directly from the tube. I put a little bit on his ear. I put a spot in his nose, uh, one in his eye. Just sometimes at the very end of a painting, I'll see something that I consider a color spot of value. It'll be the exact same value as everything else that I put in, but I can see it as a, like a specific color. And since I use cerulean in this painting, in all my mixes, it goes to put cerulean blue in those spots. It just sort of heightens the interest of the painting overall. The color isn't showing up as bright as as the color is in the in the studio in real life, and I just think that's because it was a it was snowy and gray. But I wanted to get a good painting of Henry Dunn or my first painting of Henry Dunn. He's a smooth collie. All my collies in the past have been the really fluffy ones, what they call the rough collie. So you can really see uh, the structure of his <laughs> the structure of his body and his head. His body is uh, very weird in some ways. It's a very bony bony body. Um, but I'll get better at painting at it, painting it the more I observe it. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Um, please join my YouTube channel, and um, because at least half of you who watch haven't joined, so please join. It's free, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.